and then talk a little bit about um, who we are and why we're all here today. And we'll definitely give you guys an opportunity at the end to ask questions. We're gonna kind of go through a lot about the Great Give, a lot about your profile. We hope all of you are participating and we hope that you are all already signed up. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about deadlines and things like that. Um, and then at the end, if you guys have any specific questions that we didn't cover, uh, we'll definitely see what we can do to answer those. And so if it looks like most people are on mute, um, which is great, cuts down on the barking dogs and the children who are at my house right now and I don't have to worry about. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Okay, can you guys all share my, see my screen? I'm going to make you guys a little bit smaller. So Chantal and Gretchen, I will rely on you guys to jump in if uh, you need to interrupt me. I'm happy to do it. Um, so welcome to the Great Give 2021. Um, who are we? Uh, Kitsap Community Foundation. We, like a lot of you guys, are a nonprofit organization. And we're working to create an equitable, sustainer, sustainable culture of philanthropy in our community. Um, I'm not going to go into our vision and mission, uh, but one of our key goals in our strategic plan is connecting with our nonprofit sector. You guys are the lifeblood of our community, and by working with you guys, we know that we are improving the lives of so many people in Kitsap. Uh, so we are grateful to be partnering with all of you guys on this, and I think this will be an even more successful year. So why the great give? Um, you know, eight, well, maybe nine years ago, our former CEO said, I want to do a giving day similar to what the Seattle Foundation created. Um, and so we started doing that. And so we don't, we don't receive any financial benefit. Uh, we don't charge the nonprofits. Uh, but we really saw this as a way to increase philanthropy in all of Kitsap and surrounding areas. Um, we, we offer a competitive grant cycle, but we, our funds are very limited. And so we don't have enough money to go around. So we thought Great Give is a great way to support nonprofits that are participating and, you know, increase your skills on online donations. And we can all rally around one common um, giving day. It was the biggest, biggest philanthropic day last year. It was amazing. Uh, so let me go down here. Oh, and, and this is well, this is one of Cole's old things. He would always say, it's a win-win-win. It's good for the donors. It's good for the nonprofits. It's good for the community. So, uh, so what is it? Uh, hopefully you do know, but it's 24 hours. I can't online. hear anything. I can see that. I can see the. Yeah. <laughs> Jackie, I'm going to go ahead and mute you. Um, if I can find you there, I guess I can. Um, so it's 24 hours of online giving. So any anyone in the country, outside of the country can donate uh, through one transaction through the website, kitsapgreatgive.org. The minimum donation is $10. There's no maximum, but only donations up to $10,000 uh, are boosted by our donors, our, by our bonus pool. Um, we also have prizes, uh, an early bird prize. The, we're doing a new red lantern uh, prize this year. We do some hourly prizes. That's called our uh, golden tickets uh, to try and increase kind of the fun of the event. And we also have early giving. We know not everybody can give on that day. So we open up giving April 1st. Donors can make donations um, at their convenience. They're not, some of those early donations are not eligible for some of the early bird prizes, but uh, it's a fun way to uh, allow all your donors to participate. So a little bit about last year and kind of our historical, uh, this is, our, I said, our eighth year. Last year was amazing. Uh, we, we, we weren't sure because COVID had just hit. Somebody asked us, hey, are you even going to keep doing this online thing? And we said, well, it seems more important than ever. Um, and the community really responded. So you can see last year we raised 2.23 million. Um, 
and let me I'm gonna adjust my screen a little bit there, uh, which was an increase of 58% from 2019. So it was huge. Uh, maybe we'll get there again this year. Uh, you know, we can always we can always help. Um, last year, the average gift amount was $159. And you can see since 2014, we've raised nearly $10 million for nonprofits in Kitsap, which is phenomenal. So if you wanna learn a little more information about uh, the history of the event, you can go view our community report and it's got the website. And this day is possible because of, oh, let me get a little bit bigger there, hang on, of our sponsors. Um, we go out and these amazing, the United Way of Kitsap County is our presenting partner and has been since the beginning. And you can see our lead sponsors, supporters, other sponsors, media sponsors. These people are what provide the bonus pool. So when you are frequenting these businesses, you know, please say, hey, we really appreciate you su supporting the Kitsap Great Give. And uh, some, some nonprofits do a great job and they put the, our sponsor block on their communications. So that's great. If you can do that, we appreciate it. So uh, thank you to these sponsors. And we're always welcoming more too, I would say. Uh, so if you know of a business or an individual who is interested in sponsor, uh, we can take sponsor dollars up and through the event. The, the bonus pool actually is a participating nonprofit. So we get people donating if they don't know what nonprofit to support, we say, hey, you can just support bonus pool and it goes to all the nonprofits. So uh, kind of where we're at now getting started, uh, we hope most of you are ready for step three, um, that you've already done, through, done your planning, um, that you've looked at the nonprofit toolkit, we'll go into that in greater detail and that you've registered, uh, you have to re-register every single year uh, because we need to know that you're still a operating nonprofit and that you wanna participate. And then step three, which is what you're starting is taking action. Um, so let me just give you a little bit on the timeline. Um, so registration uh, deadline is Sunday, the 28th. So you need to have all your required things checked off. You can come back and edit things later. So don't feel like you have to wait till the 28th. Uh, we have to do it so early because we have to do, we create a, the ma a mailer and some other publicity with all the lists of all the nonprofits that are participating. So it takes some time to get those documents produced. Uh, so in March, you know, you're going to keep checking your profile page, make sure it looks the way you want it to look. Um, and then we say a month out from the event. So March 19th, that's really when it's fine to start promoting the event. Uh, you can put things on your website, e send emails out, add things to your social media. We just want to reduce donor fatigue, which is why we wait until a month um, prior to the event. Uh, let's see, March 29th, we say, you know, make sure you know how to get your donor information. We'll show you how to do that. Early giving begins on April 1st. Now, the leaderboard will not populate until April 20th. That's part of the fun of the event is uh, kind of waiting so that when people either go to bed on the 20th or they wake up in the morning, then all of a sudden they see how much has, uh, how much giving has occurred. So, April 20th is the big day. It's a very fun one. Um, and then let's see some additional dates. Our mailer will arrive in mailboxes in early April. The sound publishing special section uh, will be published on April 16th. And if you wanna buy an ad for that, the sales deadline's March 23rd. And then we just give you a date of June 30th to say, hey, make sure you download your donor data. The site saves your donor data from year to year, but we wanna make sure you guys get it into your donor databases. So how it works for nonprofits, um, you have to be a 501c3. That's fairly easy. Most of you guys are. Um, you have to be current on your tax filings. The first year we did the great give, we got a call from the Secretary of State and they said, hey, you guys are checking these charities registrations, aren't you? And we said, we actually are. 
So that's a little confusing. There's actually two different links with the Secretary of State, which you can see down here. So one is an annual report, which all corporations are required to file. It's an easy $10 a year. You plug in your board members, super easy. Uh, the charities registration is a little more uh, in depth, but if you, not all nonprofits are required to do the charities, although they have a voluntary one that you can fill out for free. And that is a huge hang up for us. If you have employees or you pay contractors to carry out the work of your organization, or if you raise more than like $50,000 a year in donations, you must file it. And it's not a very difficult form. So that's initially $60, the renewal is 40. And that's definitely where a lot of nonprofits say, I didn't realize I had to do that. And we understand that, but if you're, if you're delinquent on it, we can't let you participate. So uh, it's, we've got websites where you can go and the Secretary of State's office is super responsive. If you call them and talk to them, they'll explain it and it's pretty easy to get it filed. And their turnaround time, is actually fairly quick. Uh, so how it works for nonprofits, uh, you have to serve residents of Kitsap and North Mason. Um, that's where our sponsors are from. So we want our dollars to stay here locally. Uh, there are some organizations that are outside of Seattle, but we really say, hey, you're gonna, we need you to use this money for serving Kitsap and North Mason. Uh, so you have to register uh, or you're not in and you have to re-register every single year. Um, so if you're a returning organization, you just log in. If you're new, you create a new profile. Um, and you have to do it by February 28th. We keep that February 28th deadline uh, similar every year. Registration opens January 1st. It closes February 28th. So just for, for planning for future years. And then a little bit about the registration process. Um, here's a screenshot of once you're logged in. And it, again, reminder, it's free. It doesn't cost you guys anything to participate. So there's a little edit and a pencil button up at the top of your profile. And that's what you wanna click to edit things. And then you can input your text, make any changes. And if you participate last year, you see your, your data is pre-populated, um, but we highly encourage you to change things up. and then always, always, always save at the bottom. Otherwise we won't get your changes. And so we'll just kind of go through a few more things. Uh, so the website slug is kind of your URL. So a lot of nonprofits will share it out. It will be kitsapgreatgive.org slash, and then the name of your organization as you put it into the system. And so it's created automatically. You guys are not able to edit it, but if something happens, you change something on your name and you'd like us to change it, you can contact greatgive at kitsapfoundation.org. Most organizations don't change it. Um, just a reminder on your contact information, please use proper capitalization and pay attention to spelling and make sure your, your address is correct. That's where your check is going to go. Uh, so it should be a mailing address. For smaller organizations, if you're using a personal phone number or a personal email in the contact information, that will show up on the profile page. So please just know that that information is going to be public. So um, just want you guys to be aware of that. The other thing we do that we offer as a service here at the foundation is we have a nonprofit directory. And so people might come to our website and look for different nonprofits and animals or health and human services. So we have an, a free nonprofit directory and we use the data from the Great Give profile in that directory. So again, the same thing with the personal information. And another reminder that when you're putting in your website and social media pages, you, you must have an HTTPS colon slash slash uh, before the URL or they don't work as a hyperlink. So on your Facebook, you don't just want to write the name of your organization. You need to actually copy the, uh, the address and paste it in. Okay, now let me talk a little bit about the media section. Um, the media is where you put your logo. It's what will show up on your page. 
so it recommends a minimum width of uh, 450 pixels, a minimum height of 450. And our pro tip here from Gretchen, our pro, is the taller that the logo, your logo is, the larger it will appear in the space. And, and you can absolutely go back in and change it after you put it in. If you say, eh, I just don't really love that, you can absolutely change it. Um, so your hero image is the image that goes at the top of your page. We have a uh, standard hero image. If you don't have the capability to create your own, that's no problem. When you're editing your profile, they have some preview page croppings. So you want to test that out. Uh, I'm on a laptop right now. And so a profile page that shows up on a laptop is going to look very different than a cell phone and very different from a large computer. So you just want to try it out. Um, one of the pro tips here is try one that's not too busy and doesn't have text on it. Uh, your public name appears on top of the image, so it can get too busy. Um, and then we also have the option to include some video. It could be a YouTube or Vimeo. It's not required, just optional. Or if you don't want to do video, you can also do an image carousel up to three images. And so you'll have to work with your team to get everything cropped and laid out the right way um, so that it appears well in there. Um, Another pro tip for you. So until you are approved, there's no way to actually preview your page. So that's why it's really important for you to get all the required uh, fields filled out so that you'll get approved. And then you can, as soon as you make changes to your page, it shows up. So it's easy to check out what changes you've made. Um, a little more about your, your profile. Um, your profile uh, content is kind of the meat of your information. There, uh, the circle here is, you know, it's got allows you to bold things, underline, put some extra spaces in. You want it to look good. A lot of text is just hard to read. Um, so just highly encourage you guys to take a look at that, share it with people who are not connected with your organization, ask them if it looks good. Short, sweet, and to the point is what we like to say. Um, the 10 word section is very important. Again, it's used for the sound publishing special section and our nonprofit directory. And you don't need to put your name in there again um, because in the directory and in sound publishing, we'll have the organization name, website, and then your description. And make it very active, transform, empower, um, things like that. Uh, your mission statement. It can appear on your profile page. If you don't want it to, just leave it blank and you can always put it in your profile content. Um, and then make sure you add your charity's registration number, which you can see where it is here. And if you had it in there last year, you know, it's still there. Now, this is the most important piece here. Uh, down towards the bottom, there's a great give 21. Yes, I have reviewed my profile for 2021 participation. If you do not click that button, we do not know that you want to participate. So please double check after you log in, edit your profile, click that, and um, then we'll get you through the approval process. Um, Oh, and there's also a space you can add a message to your donors. This, sh this shows up on the tax acknowledgement, but if you want to add a you know, sentence or two about how much this gift means to you, you can add it in there. It's no problem. And again, friendly reminder to just save at the bottom. Okay, so now what? You've done all those things. Uh, when you log back in, it will say pending foundation approval. That's when we do our due diligence, make sure that you're current with the IRS, that you're current with the Secretary of State. And given that we're up against the time here, it's really important to be in this phase at this point. Um, and then it will then say approved. And once you are approved, you show up on the leaderboard. And you can still make changes afterwards. Um, some extra tips for you. Please make sure that you add other users for the organization. Um, we see this year after year that there's only one person creating the profile 
and then that person leaves the organization and then we're sending emails to that one person and they're not getting the emails. So we highly recommend that you have at least two users in the system. Um, and then also just try to remember your email address that you have associated with it. We find sometimes people will go in and create a new account because they can't remember. And if you don't know which email it is, you can always contact our office and we can help you with that. Um, so to see your donor information, so you can see over here on the left, it's a little small, but it says Kitsap Great Give 2021. And it will have some different things. It will say profile, donations, and then below it, it has Kitsap Community Foundation. That's the whole umbrella. And that will have where you can add users to your system. Now, if you're up on this top section, that will show you the current year 2021 donations. Now, if you need to access the previous years, you want to be down here in this section. And when you, um, when you click on donations in the lower section, it will bring up all your donors and it will say, you know, Shane Shramling donated a thousand dollars in Kids Up Great Give 2019. But you can't download that uh, file. So if you want to be able to download, you have to click into each event. Okay, the important stuff. When do we get our money? And a little bit more about money. So you can, so many nonprofits think, hey, I'm gonna go find my own matching funds. And so we've added a little section on the nonprofit FAQs. Uh, there is a spot on your profile page, say you have a donor that says, hey, I'm gonna give $1,000 to the senior center to match donations. So the senior center would then put in $1,000. They'll say $1,000 matching available. And then as people start to make donations, that number will go down. It will say 500 available on the match. Now that money, that matching money doesn't actually run through the foundation. Uh, we report that money out. So if, if the donor were then to then make the donation later in the night, it actually gets double counted. Um, so if you've never done a match before, don't worry about it. Um, and if you have questions, contact us after looking at the FAQs. The prizes, um, we've got some from the most unique donors, which um, there's nice definition on the website uh, to the new Red Lantern. It's the nonprofit that raises the most money, I believe, in the last hour of the night. Um, and we have an early bird prize and we can create all sorts of prizes. So if you have a donor who wants to create a prize or if you just wanna create a prize, we can do that for you. Uh, offline donations, we get a lot of questions about this. So if you have a donor that is wants to make a gift with a check, that's fine. We just need it to flow through the foundation. It needs to be made out to us. They can put the name of the organization in the memo line and we have to charge the same fee. It's actually very labor intensive on the offline donations. Um, so we, and we don't want anybody trying to take advantage of the system. So, but it, we're totally fine accepting them. We just, it's better if we have them in the office earlier. And we also got a call today. Somebody asked, hey, do you accept IRA donations? Um, if people wanna, you know, designate their IRA distribution and we absolutely can. So they just need to email um, greatgive at kitsapfoundation.org. And I need to know the amount, uh, the name of the donor and the brokerage firm and they can, and what organization they want it to go to. We have some people who say, hey, I'm gonna divide it between these six groups and that's just fine too. So, um, and a reminder on the thank yous. So we send the tax acknowledgement, it goes right away. You guys need to send your personalized thank you. It can be a phone call, it can be a card, um, but just good general donor stewardship. Uh, and then we also, I just will add to that, um, have a mechanism. So if people don't get their receipts or it gets lost in spam, we can easily resend that. Uh, checks, uh, it takes a while uh, to do all the calculations, get all the bonus pooled, offline donations continue to come in. So we have a date of June 15th to get your money out the door. Last year we did June 1st. And so we're aiming for that again. Um, but I like to over, under promise and over deliver. So we'll do our best. We know you need your money. 
Uh, so let me talk a little bit about the bonus pool. You saw this, the sponsor dollars come into the bonus pool. Um, and so it's it's kind of like a pie. If we uh, if donors give 1.75 million to these four nonprofits, uh, which is 10% of what we raise, then they get 10, they, they get that proportion. So if nonprofit A raised 45% of all the money raised, then they get 45% of the bonus pool. It is not a one for one match. Uh, I think last year, oh, I, I can't, I, I'm not going to give you the number, but uh, many years it's averaged around 11, 10, 11%. Last year was down a little bit because we raised more money. So the more money we raise, the percentage goes down. But every year we've had the great give, nonprofits always receive more money than is donated to them. Um, okay, I'm gonna now turn this over to Gretchen to talk a little bit about some of our other resources. Hello, everybody. Um, yes, so I will, I got a little bit of feedback maybe from you, Shane. I don't know. <laughs> um, so yes, the nonprofit toolkit. Um, I'm not going to go into all of the marketing details and this is what you should do. Um, we really recommend that you uh, view and download the nonprofit toolkit. I just spent a ton of time this year revamping it and combining all of our past year's um, marketing materials that Ani had did and Anna did before that and um, try to put it all together into this one master document. Um, it's super useful. It has everything from key messaging. Um, it's got uh, sample text, sample thank you text, sample phone call text um, or content if you'd like it. Um, and then uh, just tons of extra tips on gathering support. So there's a link here. It is um, this entire document when you view it, uh, the, the links are all clickable so you'll be able to access everything right from here you don't have to like copy and paste it um i don't have control so can you skip the next one thank you shane um and this year too we'd like to definitely showcase the new logo so we ask that everybody downloads the new logo and includes our new logo in all of your marketing so website marketing your print ads um anything on facebook we have a ton of logo options too. Not a ton, but in past years, I noticed um, we only really offered uh, J JPEGs and things like that. I have EPS files and PNG files and JPEG files, and we have solid colors and multicolors. So there's a lot of logo options for everybody for whatever your level of expertise is uh, with dealing with these types of assets. So it's very, lots of lots of stuff there for you and then also um, we have a box file that is where the nonprofit toolkit is and um, and the logo suite will be in there too and um, there's also lots of other uh, resources on box that you can download and view like our facebook tips and things like that um, we ask that you check out the nonprofit resources page that has all of the links to all of this stuff um, there. Um, there's also the breakdown of the sound publishing. There's a flyer there, so we'll get to that. And pretty soon in the next like week or so, I'll start uploading all of the free marketing collateral, like a yard sign if you want to print it, the postcards. We will be printing some postcards ourselves, and we'll have some extras. So if you do want any, um, please let us know. We can leave, I think, a blank space I don't have it in front of me, like a blank space for you to put your own logo if you want um, and posters and things like that too for you to print out if you want any print collateral. I know this kind of is a weird year for print. <laughs> so, um, and then we also have lots of checklists and planning templates and all the other free resources. So online. Uh, the sound publishing special section, everybody keeps asking about this. So here is the flyer. Um, and you can also click on this once the training deck is upline, as online. And there's prices and the sizing that are available for everybody. Um, the, it gets sent out on April 16th. The sales deadline 
It says here on the flyer that it is March 23rd. Um, I just heard that it was March 24th. So there's a little bit of conflicting. It's right around there, the 23rd, 24th. And then also if you are requesting that sound does your ad for you, because I believe that they do that, um, that deadline is the 23rd or 24th. If you want to have, if you're doing your own ad, then the deadline for that is March 31st and it goes to press on April 6th. So, um, and then obviously here is the contact information for Priscilla at Sound Publishing. So uh, the mailer, that's some of the big reasons that we want you guys to get all of your profiles, um, your registration completed by this Sunday, preferably before this Sunday, so we can include you inside this mailer. So this is a mailer that goes out to over 80,000 um, homes here in Kitsap, and it includes a complete list of all of the nonprofits. If you are at all late in getting your registration approved and completed, then you may not be included in this mailer. The mailer goes out in the beginning, it gets mailboxes in the beginning of April. Um, and so it often has happened that there is a couple nonprofits that don't quite make it in. So um, we, we definitely try to urge you to get your registration completed before the 28th so that you can get in there. Um, and then the BCAT, thanks to our partnership with BCAT, we put together every year, there's the live uh, BCAT special. Um, last year, it was pre-recorded, and um, this year, we're working on it, on what we want to do, um, because we are in this transition here at, at the um, Kids Up Community Foundation, um, what exactly we want to do for this. We got a chance to hear from the we can mute whoever that is. Well, that is about, uh, yeah. I don't know if you can find her, Shane. <laughs> um, so yeah, so if we can, uh, we will let you know what the BCAT special will be like um, pretty soon here. We're working on the details, so just stay tuned. What we can say is uh, we're definitely going to have it be a little more interactive this year. So we're going to request um, from my understanding what we think we're going to do is that we're going to request people to send in videos um, so it'll be a little bit more interactive with the different nonprofits with all of the nonprofits it's a little more inclusive this year so. um, and then i think what's next uh we, we ask that everybody connects with us on facebook um, if you don't have a facebook page uh, that's one of the big things we recommend um, that's kind of our main source of notifying and things like that is Facebook and obviously our emails. Um, we do have like a little tutorial on setting up a Facebook page if you don't already have one set up. There's one on, on our website. And then uh, here are the links for our Kids Up Community Facebook page and the Twitter. We have both a Twitter Kids Up Great Give page and a Kids Up Community Foundation, Foundation page. So, And we've created a 2021 event for this. In past years, um, this is my first year working with the Kitsap Community Foundation. And in past years, I've worked with other nonprofits um, for the Great Give on their marketing. And it's always confusing as to do you create your own event or do does the Kitsap Community Foundation have an event? So this year we've created the event and we kind of hope that everyone will link to the main event instead of everyone creating their own because it can get really confusing when you're when you are trying to link to an event. Um, you know, five pop up or something like that, at least. So we ask that everybody tries to link to our Facebook event. It's not, we're not going to police it. So uh, if you really want to create your own Facebook event, go ahead. Um, we just have that link there and there's the at tag to a tag it. And then obviously using the hashtag kids up great give across the board. Um, for you can use it for Facebook, you can use it for Instagram. We are not currently on Instagram, but I know that that's, that's something that we'll probably be on next year. Um, and so the hashtag Kids Up Great Give works across the board for all social media. And then also, are you getting our emails? Um, just want to make sure that if you're not getting our emails, check your spam folders. Uh, we include all of our important information, deadlines, resources, things like that will be in there, tips and tricks. Um, how to jazz up your profile, things like that will all be in our emails. So that's that slide. And then 
Yeah, thank you again for our sponsors, our awesome community sponsors. I have one other question somebody had asked. Um, thanks, Gretchen, by the way. <laughs> um, somebody asked, what is the fee? So we try, it's 5.2%. Sometimes it's actually a little bit less depending on the credit card. Um, but with, there's a 3% uh, fee for the technical service provider and then the credit card. Credit card varies a little bit. American Express is higher. Visas are lower, so it's a little tricky. We have to do our best estimating, but uh, that's what it's been. Um, and I know a couple of people already asked this in the chat and it was answered, but you can make profile changes the whole time. If you don't have a video yet, but you're gonna have it on April 18th, that's just fine. The, the site continues to update. The first couple of years we did this, the site locked down and you couldn't make changes, but now you can, it's much, uh, much better system. And as Gretchen shared earlier too, we'll put this uh, the slide deck up so you can share it with other people. We'll have the recording available if people really wanna watch through it, but we think you can get most of the stuff just from reading through the slides. Um, and now I think we'll open it up if you, maybe if you have a question, you know, maybe chat it in and then we'll take turns if there are any other questions. Um, if there's anything we didn't cover, please, please let us know. We're here to help. Ed, you have a question. You gotta unmute yourself though. Uh, I'm sorry, I've been on the phone. I've working with a, a widow here on the vaccine. But anyway, uh, I think you just covered that. Uh, my question has been uh, along the way here, and we've done this for two years, is the, uh, the contacts that we make. Uh, sponsors, we may contact, and anyone else that we may know, uh, you know, clubs or banks or whatever is is this appropriate and and uh, my thought was i had two of them but i think uh, a lot of people work electronically and i i like emails but i in many cases i don't have the emails uh, available to me but uh, i do uh, uh, presentations uh, present them right to the um, like the manager of the Kitsap credit union was one but um, the other one was to uh, to mail them, but I, I prefer to uh, be in person if I can. So you well, have some guidance on that? Yeah, so so what I would say is you, you wouldn't want to go after the sponsors to try and get them to add more money to you. Okay. You might just say, thank you. Like, we really appreciate you sponsoring the Great Give so because they they've already it. put in some money for yeah. it. So the sponsors are aware of what we got and we've updated our... Uh, uh, profile and everything, so we don't have to touch that. What we have to do is go beyond that. We work with our me our membership, and yep. also uh, contacts like if we belong to the Eagles or something like that, right? Yeah, yep. So getting your 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 supporters, your donors, your board members, you know, people, volunteers. Um, do you recommend banks and um, um, any any business? Um, you know. I think a lot of it, and other people can chime in on this, but I really think it's it's mostly individuals and people that you have an existing relationship with, um, you know, rather than you know some of those larger organizations that don't know you, your organization as much. But um, let me think about that, and if I have some other thoughts on that, I'll get back to you. Okay, thank um, you. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple questions coming in. I want to make sure we answer these. Um, the first one. So somebody is said bonus pool. the bonus pool. Yeah, I'll get to the bonus pool. Uh, they have a personal phone number, but the organization doesn't have a phone number. Um, Chantel, maybe you know the answer to this. Do, do they have to include a phone number or can it be left blank? I don't remember the answer to that question. I think it can be left blank. Okay. They have to include the email. Um, and Gretchen, could you chat in the website for where all the marketing materials are found? Yes. 
I've done that. I will do it again. It's oh, that you know what? I just you, saw it now. Yep, not, it's no, fine. Sorry. You guys can just go to our Kitsap Community Foundation.org website, and then there is a Kitsap um, Great Give in the navigation. You can just click on any of those on that, uh, the nonprofits page in the Kitsap Great Give on the Kitsap Community Foundation's website. And um, there will be all of the resources there, the slides. Another question about the bonus pool. Um, and so Denise from Barton, feel free to chime in and, and ask if, if I'm not answering your question. Um, so we take all the, the sponsor dollars, we have to pay out some expenses, uh, like the mailer expenses, uh, things like that. And then uh, people who donate during the, during the great give to the bonus pool, it's all added in together. And then that we look at all the nonprofits and how much money they raised as a percentage of all, the do all of the days giving. And so then that's how it's dispersed. So if an organization raises 2% of the remaining of the bonus pool, then that's the amount of the bonus they get. And um, last, I mean, every single year it's always covered the fees and more. We cap it at 10,000. So if you have a donor that says, I wanna donate $20,000 to you, cause I hope you all get somebody like that. Um, we max it out at 10,000 so that people can't take advantage. We, we try to just keep it a little bit more fair so that some of the larger organizations don't stack up their donations. Um, are there any other questions on that? Denise, did I answer that enough for you? Yes, thank you. Okay. I'm gonna stop the share on here. Um, any other questions? Is there anybody who's new? It's their first year participating. You could raise your hand or, okay. Yeah, so a decent amount of you. That's great. And, and what I would also encourage people to do is go look at other people's profiles. Um, go see what other you know organizations have posted, <laughs> things that you like, things that you don't like. Um, you know, there's, Nothing wrong with that. So there's a lot of amazing organizations. Last year we had 324, Chantel? Yes. 34. 34. 334. 334 organizations participating. So huge variety of um, sectors. Um, oh, I have one other question about uh, revenue. Uh, when it's when the, the profile asks you for your annual revenue, um, it's just a ballpark. Um, if your your books are not closed from last year, it's fine. Just just guess. Uh, and one other thing I wanted to talk about too was um, there's some other profile data like an impact story or major outcomes. Those are all optional. We use those sometimes to to talk with sponsors about why we put on the great give. So uh, don't feel like you have to do them. Some years we've posted them on the on the page, but we don't post them on the on your profile page anymore so just want you guys to know what what we do with those any know. other questions one more <laughs> okay ed go ahead i got a question and first of all i want to compliment uh, your organization that toolkit is amazing and very helpful i've gone through that and uh, thank you chantel <laughs> For, That's for actually that is fantastic. Uh, my other thought uh, on the profile, and it might help everybody. Um, I like to uh, introduce uh, whoever's viewing it. Uh, first of all, who we are, and da 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 da. And that's probably the best format rather than coming in early with our financial picture and what we'd like to receive. Is that true? Save, save the request to the end of the of the letter or whatever. Well, and a lot of people will come, they will come to your donation site because you've sent them an email already or you've you've called them and said, hey, will you donate to our organization? So they, a lot of people will already have their mind made up that they know they're going to come support your organization. Um, so. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, the other thing I would say too, is we often have extra mailers. 
Um, so again, if you, if your organization wants some to hand out, say you have some older donors, um, you just contact the office. We'll, in one of our emails, we'll let you know when we have them available and you can find a time to come down to the office here and pick them up. Um, and one other thing I would say too, on the day of, like this is a really fun event. Um, I mean, I've heard from many of you guys over the years that it just, it's fun. You know, we get the entire community talking about the great give. So, um, you know, have some fun with it um, and enjoy and, you know, stay up late with us on Facebook and, you know, make some comments and see who's going to win that, win that red lantern this year. Um, but yeah, you guys, you guys really do a great job on this event and we are, we are honored to do this work with you guys. Thanks for your support. Yeah, any other questions? Let's see, there's a few more in chat. I'm gonna make sure. I'm sure we'll make sure it's fund. Can you cover the people who have funds with us? Um, their donation link, there's a question for that. Oh. Um, so they take their donation link down if they have it somewhere? Oh, that's a great question. Um, yeah, actually, sometimes we have had um, organizations um, leave up a donation link on their own website and it says Kitsap Great Give, so people think they're donating during the Great Give. So make sure you're pointing people to greatgive.org, you know, either the main page or your own organization's page in there. And, you know, maybe take down some of your other donate donate buttons um, just to reduce any confusion. And the other thing I would say too is if you get a donor that calls you on the day of or a couple of days before and they said, I'm having trouble making this donation, you can help them through the process. You can pretend that you are them, put in their information, just you know, don't save any credit card information or anything. But um, you know, we are here to help too. Like our phones are uh, staffed from 6 a.m. until midnight. And so if donors have problems, you know, we're here to help them through, make sure that they get all their donations counted. Um, yeah, and if you guys have any other questions in between now and then, you know, I think you've got our great give at kitsopfoundation.org. Um, marketing questions kind of go to Gretchen. Um, but we appreciate all your time and energy. I, I, I have a silly question. Um, you mentioned the um, Facebook, connecting to your Facebook page earlier. Um, I'm on Facebook right now looking at it. Is it the, uh, the Kitsap Community Foundation page that I want to be connecting to? Yep. Okay, got it then, thank you. We're shooting for 375 nonprofits, so. We're almost there. If you know anyone, just point them to the great gift so they can register by the end of this week, right? So thank you. Oh, no, one more question. Oh, one more question. Okay, Ed. Uh, when you're requesting these donations, uh, what is the norm on this? So they normally do this like... Uh, early April, or do you uh, sort of twist her arm and say, uh, I think uh, on the 20th would be great because that's when the bonuses really come in. Uh, what, what's your thought on that? Um, anybody else can chime in here too. I mean, I think it's, it's, I, I think it's fun to get people to do it on the 20th, but there's nothing wrong with encouraging your donors to give early. Um, Okay. You'll be able to see the donations in the back end of the system. You'll be able to see which of your donor, donors have donated. It won't show up on the leaderboard, um, but you'll be able to see that ahead of time. But I don't think there's a hard and fast rule. I think everybody, you know, has a different way of doing it. Um, and if any of you guys want to chime in, please, please go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Thanks so much for all of your time and efforts on this. It's it really helpful. Thanks for joining us today, you guys. We really appreciate it. We'll, we'll close it out.
We're here if you guys have any questions. So just email us. <laughs> Send an email. Thank you.